Hi, my name is Jeremy. I'm a fabricator and mechanic, and I'm on a journey to build a 1937 Auto Union Type C. In this episode, we're going to show taking the back half of the transmission off, uh, pulling the differential out, and welding it up so it no longer differentiates, and basically locks the transmission into front-wheel drive, which for our application will be rear-wheel drive because it's way back yonder. And I think that's pretty much it. Let's get to the video. If I got all the bolts out of this housing, I'll pull it off. And then, if you look, so this is the uh, output from the, the center differential right there. So it comes through there and then drives up to this gear, which drives the rear uh, axle in the car. This is the center differential. Oh, there we go. That's all, it had to be in neutral. Okay, so here's the center diff. There's our little bitty baby output shaft for the tail. It appears what we need to do, I'll have to get a better lighting set up for you guys, but there's two sections of spline here, here and here. And these need to be locked together. We might just pull the chunks out of this, or we might, pop this differential apart and just do like the old uh, Lincoln locker and weld up this differential because uh, that should provide the same thing. Only downside to that is then you have all this extra weight we don't really need. I'll have to do some pondering. You can get the little lockout collar, but then we have to cut this off and there's no well, I guess it doesn't really need to be any support. I'll have to do some thinking. We might just buy the, the lockout collar because that, I believe, you just unscrew this nut and uh, it goes over and you screw this nut back on. Bada bing, bada boom. Easy peasy. Well, cool. That's taking the rear diff out. That's cool. That's the same thing as like on a standard um, Subaru. This is the same, this is the shaft that normally sticks out the back of a Subaru transmission. And it does exactly the same things. It's just got levers. You can see it rotate and then in and out. So that's exactly what it does on a normal Subaru. Here we have the differential apart. So these are the spider gears, look just like the ones in a rear end. And they fit right down in here. So the way this works is power comes in to this first set of splines. Think of this as the ring gear, so it drives the, the carrier. The second set of splines is right here, and it drives, this one drives the front wheels, and then this one drives the back wheels. So what we're going to do is, this actually goes in here. This little shim goes down there, but not in here. Basically, the key thing we need to do is make sure that this this spline drive matches the turning of that spline drive and that there is no differential action happening. Because if there is, it will take the path of least resistance, burn up this clutch pack, which is already smells horrific. Burn up this clutch pack here and then no worky worky. That's the, the, the idea. What we need to do is make sure that this and this are locked to this uh, housing so that this transfers the power to the front axle. Would you chill, dude? Hey, come here. Just lay down. There you go. He gets wound up over the weirdest things. And yeah, there's, this is dirty. I will clean it all before it goes back in the transmission. But for now, I'm just looking trying to figure out what the best bet will be. I don't really want to do any welding on this if I can help it, because it looks like it's a forged uh, forged part that would have been um, heat treated as well. So if I start welding on it, there goes the heat treat, and then this relatively small section of splines just go, and no more splines, no more drive. 
But we'll figure out something. The, what we need to do is just make sure the spider gears can't turn. So that might be something as simple as... Once they're down where they go, marking them can actually... Uh, welding them to this center shaft because it is lined up on these outside edges so it can't really go back and forth any might just put like a tack weld here and here and then weld all the way around as well as these i don't know these are also heat treated so here's my uh, solution these are still loose but i welded the uh, spider gears to the crossbar and then what I did was I put it all in the transmission and tack welded it so that these gears are for sure um, lined up and will sit appropriately, uh, you know, that they're clocked appropriately to sit uh, like so, centered on the splines of this one in particular, which sits down in there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean all this up and reassemble it put it back in the transmission, and then we'll start working on, uh, we'll probably pull this out to keep from hurting it, and then we'll start working on, uh, we'll pop this race out because we don't need it anymore, and we'll probably cut this off somewhere about here and weld on a new a cap. this dude off. And then we'll just have to cut out a piece to uh, put on here. We'll heat this up nice and warm with the torch, clean this up nice with like acetone, and then we'll weld a cap on here. It doesn't need to be very thick. Um, and this looks like a very nice clean casting, so it should weld pretty decently. So that's what we'll do next, I guess, is uh, put a cap over this. Here's a cool little trick you can do. So get your fingers just a little bit dirty in the shop. And then I wanna get this shape to transfer to aluminum so I can cut a plug to fit down inside of here. But it's it's an odd non-circular shape. So take our little piece of paper here. Oop. And then we have the temple.
I've got it fitted pretty well. And we're just gonna press it in with the vise. There we go. We can do a little bit of fine tuning with the hammer, but uh, that's it. And I was gonna tell you, if you don't have an aluminum welder, you can still do this and just epoxy it. Put like uh, a good two piece epoxy. Cause this is not pressure bearing or anything like that. All this is, is just to seal this off. And if I had like some eighth inch aluminum, that's what I would have used. The only thing I have is half inch. So that's what I'm using to plug this up. Just press this down a little bit more and then clean this up, cut a chamfer and then preheat the whole thing nice and toasty and uh, run a, a sick fat bead around here. it up the weld is not great because this casting was actually filthy I heated it up as hot as I thought I could with the map gas and uh, where it was clean the center chunk that was nice and pure it flowed really nicely but this outer periphery is just horrific so I'm gonna let this cool off slowly and then I'm gonna check it for leaks from the backside before bolting it back on the engine or training sorry Your stuff oh. and we have lost about three inches off of the back of the uh, transmission no more output shaft I'm stoked she's done